in Mesa Logan and here at West of Pilates, which is a place where I teach all my private clients when I'm here in Los Angeles. And this week I'm joined up again with Andrea Maida Pilates. You can check out her YouTube channel um, under Andrea Maida Pilates. We are continuing our collaborations and this week we're focusing on rowing. And rowing is got six exercises in the whole series. Um, but we're going to start in the reverse-ish order with rowings five and six, also known as shape and hug. And there are several reasons for this. Um, the first being the, the order that they go in is amazing. But when you are learning them for the first time, those first two have so much coordination, so many parts that are going to challenge you. that You've really got to be connected to your back and your center and your seat before you ever get there. And so um, what I love about teaching people shave and hug first is that it really does set them up for the first four that come to it. Also, by the time you get to shave and hug in the rowing series, you have been doing your pulling straps, which we talked about a lot last week. And the pulling straps really do help set you up for shave and, shave and hug because they are so centered around strengthening this area. Um, and shave and hug in the actual order of the reform of the way Andrea and I teach it will come before pulling straps. So eventually shave and hug will warm you up for your long box. But until you get to rowing, long box actually prepares you for your rowing series. So it's kind of fun. Uh, you're going to do it on one heavy spring. And you will start, I like to start people sitting up against the shoulder blocks, but not resting, right? So you're here. Now, my body loves its ribs to be forward. And I'm sure when I'm talking to you, my ribs are going to totally pop out. So do as I say, not as I show. Because <laughs> that is a challenging spot for me, is to stay connected to my back. But you start cross-legged like this, and what's beautiful about this position is it allows me to find my seat, which I'm going to need for rowings one through four. Like you are just, the, the seat is so critical to rowings one through four that shave and hug really helps prepare you for that. So I push my knees down. Also, this is a really great position and training for your crab on the mat, and it's a really fun exercise to do, but it requires you to be able to move your legs in this position. So. Pushing your knees down, or sometimes I feel like people think about sucking their thigh bones in. Whatever helps you find this will really ground you because as we know, it applies to the opposition. So that as my arms go up, my knees are gonna reach down so that I have something going into the carriage so that I can reach away from it. And what this does is it really helps create length in my spine, which as we know, I'm gonna need for my long box for pulling straps because it's so easy to do pulling straps into your lower back. But what I want you to focus on here, and some people do go think about going all the way to the base of the neck, I don't have that possibility without letting go of everything. So I just go to about the base of my head, and then I reach up, and then I pull down. And the pull down is a lot like a lap pull, right? So I'm not taking my hands apart, but that idea if I'm at the gym of pulling down without popping my ribs up so I connect to my back. So same thing here, if I push my fingertips together, I actually get this amazing connection through my scapula on my back and they can glide up and down. Now this is an awesome piece. Right here, as I go to switch to my hug, and I switch the cross of my legs on my own without using my hands and going to my hug. That is what you're gonna need when you're upside down your crab. So you can practice it here and you can practice it on your mat. So the hug, a lot of my clients, they're so focused on the front, boom. Boom, but they, there's so much missing with that, right? Because we know we have pull straps coming up and we know we have the T-pull. So keep your hands super connected to your handle. Don't let it come off like that. Keep it super connected and you reach forward so that you can open the spring and stay connected to your back, right? You're gonna reach and then you're gonna pull it back. It is all for the back because we have swan along box coming up and we have our pulling straps and all the way up until we get to teaser, you know, we really want to be connected to our back so that we don't fall off our teaser box. So I just moved away from my shoulder box because this is where I really like to do shave and hug. It's more challenging, but for me, it keeps me from sinking into the shoulder box. There's something I, I'm someone who loves touch, right? Like it's one of my love languages. And so if I'm touching my shoulder box, I'm going to want to touch my shoulder box. So I move a little bit forward and it challenges everything. I find a little bit more lift. And then again, as I switch from my hug, I don't get to sink back. And instead it requires me to get a lot more lift and length and stay a lot more connected to my back, which 
The seat and the back are not going to go away. Uh, the more you connect to them in your shave and hug, the sooner and more prepared you're going to be for rowings one through four. And that's what I have to say about the shave and hug. I freaking love it. I never let people skip it. I get people to do it as soon as I think that they can because it teaches us so much about opposition and gravitational pull and reach and grounding and finding our seat so that way, you know, you can take that with you in everything else you do in Pilates. Make sure to check out what Andrea Maida has to say over her channel here on YouTube. I know I'm excited because she's brilliant. And we will continue our rowing um, adventures in the next two weeks. Join us next time for rowings three and four. All right, thanks for watching. For more videos, make sure you subscribe to both of us.